Keep your heads lifted up, beautiful family in Jesus Christ. And here's the verse of the day. And it's John 1, 5. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And all glory to our Father in the name above every name, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, for his signs. Acts 2, 19. And I will shew wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for your wonders in heaven above and your signs in the earth beneath. And thank you for using me and allowing me to share them with our brothers and sisters to encourage them and keep them watching. What's up, fam? I love you for loving the Lamb, the great I Am. God bless all of you. Now on to the signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And we'll start with the Star of Jacob that will appear on Friday, September 27th. And I've been holding on to this all year. But Jesus Christ's timing is perfect. Numbers 24, 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth. And Moab is Jordan. And remember, Amos the prophet says that Gaza will be punished, Lebanon will be punished, Jordan will be punished, Damascus will be punished, and then Israel. And when you scroll down and read this article, it reveals a lot. And it says the Zohar gives a precise day and date that this pre-Messiah astral body will appear. And recently, astronomers confirmed that on that precise date, a comet will appear in the heavens. And the Zohar is a book of interpretations written about the Bible. And it says the Zohar 2.12b goes into detail describing the star of Jacob. And right here it says the date described in the Zohar as the day on which the star will appear corresponds to the Hebrew date 25 of Elul, which is September 27, 927, like Daniel 927. And it says the Zohar specifies that this date will fall on a Friday, the sixth day of the week. And it says, and get this, in the middle of the world, when that star will shine in the middle of the firmament, a great king will arise and rule the world, and his spirit will gain pride over all the kings, and he will awaken a war between both sides, and he will become strong against them. And on January 9, 2023, last year, the headline news in astronomy was that a new comet had been discovered. C slash 2023 A3 Suchashan Atlas. And as the saying goes, follow the white rabbit. And right under the asteroid, next to the eclipse, white rabbit, right underneath is Suchashan Atlas. And astronomers say that Suchashan Atlas will be at its closest on Friday, September 27, 2024. And that day corresponds with the 25th of Elul, just as the Zohar predicted. They estimate it will be visible to the naked eye for at least two weeks. And even the article says, I think we should all hope and pray that this really is it, because how much longer can we wait? So I'll take you to Stellarium and show you what I'm seeing with Suchashan, the comet they're calling the Star of Jacob. It's right there, right now, today, on August 27th. And when you zoom in and you start walking through the days, you could see that the tail starts growing right around September 7th. And as you pass the blood moon on the 18th, you could see that the tail is growing and it's getting bigger and bigger as we approach the solar eclipse on 10 2 on the Feast of Trumpets. You could see that the tail of this comet is huge. Well, here's what's gigantinormous. As you go through the days and you get to the one year anniversary since Israel was attacked, you could see that the tail disappears completely after the seventh. 
And now I'll zoom back out so you can see right where it's at. Right above the sun, right after the eclipse on the Feast of Trumpets. And I'll back up to the second. Right when the eclipse happens on the Feast of Trumpets. And remember, the asteroid feast is right next to the eclipse on the Feast of Trumpets. Now I'm going to show you the narrow path of the eclipse and how gigantinormous it is. And when the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, showed me this, I was completely rocked. And he poured his spirit upon me at least 25 times that day. In the verse of the day, when this happened, on 823, was Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer thee and shew thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And he showed me this on 823, mine and Christina's 24 year anniversary. And on our anniversary, on that date, the sun was on what they call the heart of the lion, Regulus. And a lot of you probably remember Christina telling you that she had this dream years ago and in her dream, 725 was there, but no one could find 811. Now I'll break it down for you. On October 2nd, on the solar eclipse that's in the woman, on the Feast of Trumpets, with all the signs that we printed the flyer for, all glory to our Father, you can see right here that it says, that for 7 minutes and 25 seconds, this eclipse will be at its maximum. And most eclipses are only at their maximum for a few minutes. So this hit me, it rocked me. 725 was there. Just like Christina's dream. And I'm feeling the Holy Spirit right now. All glory to you, Father. But it gets bigger, way bigger. And as you can see right here, on time and date, when you add 40 days to that date, August 23rd, the date he showed me this, mine and Christina's anniversary, 40 days later, it lands on the eclipse on October 2nd. But it gets bigger. When you add 40 days from the eclipse date, October 2nd, it lands on 11-11 this year. Well, when you go to Hebcal Converter, on 11-11 this year, and you convert it to the Hebrew calendar, it's Cheshvan 10. One week before the anniversary of the Great Flood. And Cheshvan 10 is the day that Noah and his family entered the ark and the door was shut. And he's hitting me with the Holy Spirit again. All glory to you, Father. And now I'm going to share a quick biblical speculation and I'll take you to Matthew 27, 50, and everyone should know this. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the bell of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. But it doesn't say how long they were here before they were caught up. But my biblical speculation is, when Jesus ascended, Acts 1.11, after 40 days after the resurrection, I'm guessing that he took them with him at that time, 40 days later. And again, this is just speculation. But I'll tie it together. October 2nd, the eclipse, plus 40 days, lands on 11-11, Cheshvan 10, when Noah and his family went in the ark and the door was shut. So could we possibly be changed in the twinkle of an eye on the eclipse on October 2nd and then be caught up on 11-11 when the door is shut? And a lot of you might be thinking that's a stretch and it's a reach. And that's probably not going to happen. But let's look at the word. Behold, I shew you a mystery. So there's more to it than what we know. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. 
In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. So we know that it's a fact that in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. Now back to the word, Luke 23, 44, and it was about the sixth hour and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour, about a three hour time frame. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the ghost. About the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Around a three-hour time frame, on October 2nd, the Feast of Trumpets, the solar eclipse, will last approximately three hours, family. Overall, the eclipse will last 223 minutes, a minute after 222. Two, two. That's three hours and 43 minutes. Well, remember, Enoch says from the first portal of its season until 177 days be accomplished, 177 days, and 177 days from the Nineveh, Jonah eclipse, the great American solar eclipse on 4-8 this year, 177 days later, lands on October 2nd. And in Strong's Bible Concordance, the definition is uncovered, usage unveiled. And remember, the total time of this eclipse is 3 hours and 43 minutes. And when you go to Bible Strong's Concordance for 343, the time of the eclipse, it's also to unveil. Usage, I unveil. And when a solar eclipse happens, the moon moves in front of the sun and darkness comes. And this one's for three hours and 43 minutes. And about the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. There could have been darkness over the land for three hours and 43 minutes when Jesus was crucified from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. And as you can see right here in California on October 2nd on the Feast of Trumpets, the eclipse will be at 8.42 a.m. And remember, it's three hours and 43 minutes. And remember, Israel is 10 hours ahead of us. So this eclipse will be from six to nine in Israel, family. And it was about the sixth hour and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And now I'm going to show you something else that ties into the resurrection and hopefully the future resurrection and rapture. It's Matthew seven fourteen because straight is the gate and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. So we all know we're supposed to be on the narrow path. And all glory to our Father, I showed you that this eclipse is at its maximum for 7 minutes and 25 seconds. And here's where it gets beyond gigantinormous. The eclipse will be visible from a narrow path that crosses over Chile, Argentina, and Easter Island. This eclipse is special for several reasons, including... It comes after the Great North American Eclipse on April 8, 2024, which may increase interest in solar eclipses and lead many people to travel to see it. Location? The best place to view the eclipse may be Easter Island, also known as Rapa Nui. Well, we all know that they tried to cover up Resurrection Day with Easter. But what I didn't know is Easter Island was originally called Rapa Nui. And this is so off the charts, family. I'm feeling this Holy Spirit before I even tell you. And before I show you what's up with Rapa Nui, right under that you could see it says the eclipse will create a ring of fire. This annular solar eclipse will be a ring of fire eclipse, like a wedding ring. On the Feast of Trumpets. And now I'll take you to Stellarium, and I showed you it's on the flyer that Mary is right under what they call Venus while the eclipse is happening on the Feast of Trumpets, right in what they call the scale. And when I first noticed it there, I was thinking Mary, Jesus' mom. 
But now I'm thinking Mary Magdalene at the tomb. She was the first to see Jesus when he was resurrected. Well, right next to Mary, and this is so gigantinormous, family. You can see it's right there. Rapa Nui, main belt asteroid. And soon as I typed that in, I got blown up. And I jumped up out of my seat and ran around the garage doing a victory lap. Then I sat back down praising him and clicked on it. And Rapa Nui is right there too. On the Feast of Trumpets, next to Mary, during the eclipse, with such a shan, Atlas, the star of Jacob, and so much more. And if we're still here, I'll keep going over it. But it's stacked, family. It's going down and we're going up. All glory to our Father and I got the Holy Spirit all over me. So keep your heads up, family, because in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we will be changed.